That title started as the dedication in The Ascent of Humanity, which was the first real book I wrote. I said, dedicated to the more beautiful world our hearts tell us is possible. And then I you know, changed it a little bit. But, but the idea being that, um, that we know that it doesn't have to be like this. Yeah. That the world doesn't have to be as ruined and ugly and painful and inauthentic as has been presented to us as as normal. And that and that the, this possibility, our hearts know, but our minds may not actually believe that we can get there. So we're, so I'm calling for for us to uh, listen to the, I mean, it sounds like a cliche, but listen to the heart at a time, when the mind might be counseling despair, uh, futility, um, or numbness. The other thing is that possible means not in the sense of maybe it could happen if everybody changes, but that I myself have agency, that my choices matter, that it's within our reach. And paradoxically, this is true for everybody. It doesn't have to be an opposing force, and that's why I wrote the book, to reconcile the logic of the heart and the logic of the mind. Because mm. when the mind says it's impossible, it's impossible for the world to heal or for me to heal or my family to heal or my relationship to heal, that, that assessment is based on certain premises that may not be true, received by our culture, received by our life experience. And and it's and when we can deprogram from those, then heart and mind can be united. And all of these things confirmed my lifelong suspicion that it's not supposed to be this way. Yeah. That, and that reality is a lot bigger than I was told. Reality, possibility, so much bigger. It's supposed to be authentic and beautiful and intimate and and connected and and children are supposed to be outdoors playing with each other and we're supposed to be singing together and and the loudest sounds we hear should be birds and children laughing not motors and the world should be becoming more and more alive and more and more beautiful because of our participation in it that's how it should be the story that we've been living in as a civilization for centuries even longer that is intensifying today and also disintegrating today the story that tells us that we're separate from each other in essence that tells us that humans are separate from nature that tells us that our destiny is to um control and dominate, and that our progress comes through exerting more and more thorough control on everything and everybody else to maximize our self-interest, because we are separate selves. It's that story, the story that tells us that we're fundamentally alone in the universe, in a universe of atoms and void, of generic building blocks and random forces that we can better ourselves by controlling. Like that whole story that says, and, and I can apply it more specifically, that says that, that health is a matter of control, of keeping all the bad stuff out, rather right. than a matter of full relationship. That says that security comes through high walls and drones and bombs to protect ourselves from the other, rather than to um, come into fuller relationship with the other. Um, that says that I mean, this, I can apply it to every field. And, and so this is what's getting in the way. And, and also that you know, offers us a way forward, which is to reconceive all of these systems, uh, like money, for example, like justice, like, like, like technology. I mean, all of these, we can reconceive them according to a new and ancient story, which answers those questions differently. Who are you? You are the totality of all the relationships of this separate self. You are a, a mirror 
of the whole cosmos? Why are you here to serve life and beauty in the cosmos? Um, what is humanity? Uh, it's the ex next expression of nature to make nature even more diverse. Like all of these, you know, a, a mythology answers those questions. And so this is what my work is about. It's like, okay, what is this new mythology, uh, which actually isn't new? And how does it apply to agriculture, to education, to medicine, to, to economics? That's, that's how I approach it. And, you know, I mean, this is the intellectual level, but there's also a poetics underneath it and a, um, and, and, you know, you don't have to conceptually understand all of this to serve the same thing that I'm seeking to serve. Any time that you do something in service to life that doesn't make sense in the logic of self-interest and separation, and your mind is like, how is that ever going to benefit me? And, and what good is that going to do? But it's in service to life, then you're part of the same thing.